Hey everyone. Tight smile. Tight smile because he's turning off his notifications. Yeah, and right actually, now. guys, so all the clowns that are on the show show today, can you just turn off your notifications? Clowns. Like you have to do do not disturb. Because what happens is when it beeps, it's like beep, and then it echoes. It's so annoying. Ask um Richard Kind. All right, That's okay. not nice, Seth. I had to out him. One. Don't out Richard. Beep. The point is, um, this is Stars <laughs> in the House. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Stars in the House uh, is a show that happens twice a day, 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. every day. Started it five weeks ago, right now, today. Today's month. Yes, five weeks. Five week oh anniversary. God, you do lose track of time. Yes. So crazy. Um, we do it for the yeah, actors fun. The actors fun. <laughs> James, we're just raising money for rich actors. What's up with that? No, Seth, we are not raising money for rich actors. We're raising money for any professional in the performing arts who lives anywhere in the United States. Just on stage. Nope, not just on stage, Seth. Behind the scenes, mm -hmm. it can be opera companies, ballet companies, voice teachers, dance teachers, stage managers, casting directors, grips. What are all the right. those things that you don't Best know? Best boys. Yeah, all those things. You Ushers. Don't yes. All the above. Wait, I think we have to <laughs> kick David out of the studio. David, we got to kick you out of the studio. Oh, there he goes. Okay. Um, <laughs> anybody that that needs help right now, nobody is working, and you know, just basically it's, almost everyone. Yeah, and the reality is most people living agents and and and. People in publicity offices. I mean, there are a lot of people yeah. that are losing their jobs. We we know some people that were just furloughed, and um, you know, a lot of people really do live check to check in quote unquote the business. And Absolutely. you know, you think oh, I'll make my I'll make my rent money. Like we we have you know we were just talking to some kind of wedding singer in Texas, and she was like about to make like three hundred dollars doing a wedding, and everything is canceled. And it's like people are relying on that money to right. live. So you go to actorsfund.org. And they'll help you with you know medical bills, insurance, rent, whatever kind of money you need. They, right. They're really, really great. But the way they normally make money has been Ixnate. Right. They had a giant gala, which is now postponed till until November. Yeah, it's on November. Right. And then we're going to need the money now. They were going to do. Uh, right. There you go. Uh -oh. You have to turn towards me. Why not? You're playing piano. They were going to do a full concert of Ragtime with the whole original cast. And I don't think it's been officially canceled, but no. it's not happening. No. So all these ways that we're going to make money has been Ixnate, but now they need more money. Than literally ever. They've given out more money in the last five weeks than they've given out usually per year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, by far. And I wanted to, I mean, we get- So start so donating. Questions. Stars yes. in the house.com. $5 is the minimum. And $5 would be delicious. If you all just donated $5, thumbs up. Absolutely. So there are quite a few people that have donated. And I want to just pick out some of the minute, like literally hundreds of people are donating every day. I'll accompany it's it. It's amazing. Okay, so. So I'll just pick out some random names here. Um, oh my gosh. Michelle from New York, $15. Christina from California, $50. Brianna from Colorado, $10. Taylor from New Jersey, $50. Kaylee from Pennsylvania, $25. Megan from Texas, $25. Michelle from Alaska, $100. Allison from Michigan, $5. Jordan from Wisconsin, $25. Arena from Massachusetts, 18 oh, Okay, now I'm done. Thank you. So from Pennsylvania, okay. 25. And on the button. <laughs> and on the button. But that all adds up, and it adds up to, so far, $229,700 raised for the Actors Fund. And I think the average donation, if I had to bet, is probably like $35. Yeah, and and every, it's more than 100 more That's than a lot 000. of people. And if you guys donate tonight, I'm going to text some names to Derek Baskin, who's going to read those names and those numbers with some sassy Derek Baskin riffs. Wow. So please nice. donate tonight and I'll be texting Derek Baskin <laughs> and he'll be reading some with sassy riffs. Before we get to everyone from Difficult People, yes, which queen. by the way, that's why we're here is oh, yeah, literally, it's a reunion. yeah, go ahead, Seth. It's a reunion of Difficult People. That's right. We're trying to just um, I don't know. We have a mystery guest? We don't know that's about it? All right, right, we'll find out. Um, I wanted to read this short letter from Jenny from Chicago and it says Chicago, Followed your format, Seth and James, and oh, the season, town, Chicago. season of yes, not the show. Season of Concern, which is an organization supporting Chicago theaters, had a fundraiser that did like stars in the house sort of thing. And on just, streaming, yeah, on on, streaming, yeah. And Jesse Mueller, Chicago native, was part of it, and they raised over ten thousand dollars. That was just yesterday. So we're really encouraging theater companies. All well, anybody use Streamyard.com. The reason we use Streamyard is because you can stream live. People keep calling it Zoom. It's not Zoom. Zoom, you can't Zoom, stream you live. Can't stream here, you can stream on Facebook, YouTube, Periscope. <laughs> slash Twitter. Yeah, do a fundraiser for your theater company. And by the way, if you bought tickets to a theater show right. and it was canceled because everything's been canceled, um, try not or to concert. ask for, or concert, yeah, try not to ask for a refund. Just say, use that money towards keeping the theater alive or the concert world alive. Okay, Seth, um, I think 
it's time. What I think do you that's think? it. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we're going to bring – oh, I think – oh, he was the one who got who left the studio. Wait, now Dave is back because oh, I think maybe Billy's having a problem. Well, you know, we're going to bring Angela because well, she's the can, creator. We can bring the creator, yeah. writer, producer, and star – Four and one. And also lead redhead. <laughs> Only the redhead. You want to introduce that? Please welcome the lovely Julie Klossner. Hi. Hi, Julie. Hi. Whoa, where are you? It's so beautiful. I live in the set of Lappin. <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> it looks, that's great. You look amazing. Um, so Julie Klossner, uh, we met so many years ago. I, I was I a child. Think, I was gonna say, I think you called me. I don't I don't know how we met. How did we actually meet? It was a really bad date, Seth. <laughs> I said I was experimenting. You said you were open to it. What? No, seriously, I have no memory of how we actually met. It was the 90s. I mean, who remembers anything? Thank you. Okay, so you I know you're uh you, you in, in my mind, I remember going out, you were talking about being a comedy writer. What were you sort of working as? Like when you got out of college, like what was your job? Were you a comedian, writer, singer? What were you doing? I was trying to do comedy and it was, uh, it, it, and the UCB theater opened in New York around that time. So I had a place to kind of figure out what I was doing, but I was always obsessed with musical theater and it's still a dream of mine if Broadway ever opens again to, uh, you know, get on that great white way. Oh, I love that aspect of it. Well, actually you will, okay, let me say two things. You did this amazing comedy sketch. This when I first was like, oh my God, she's so funny. So. Talk to me about that sketch that I saw, which is kind of before the internet really hit it big. I'm gonna have to be more specific, Seth. My body of work is almost <laughs> as gorgeous as my actual physical body. There was one thing you did that was funny. No, it was, <laughs> it was a, you showed it to me so many years ago. Welcome to my house. What was that based on? Why did you write it? I'm obsessed with it. It was uh, based on Brenda Dixon's Welcome to My Home. She's a soap opera actress and uh, 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 an icon. And it was a parody that I did with uh, Jackie Clark uh, over a decade and a half ago, I think. It's I gotta just show some clips from it. I'm sort of obsessed with it. I'm obsessed, especially with the ending, with the crazy. You'll see with the crazy mispronunciation. <laughs> just it, I'll, I'll describe what I'm obsessed with. But first, just watch it. So it's basically two soap opera actresses who play twins talking about fashion and getting that look. Here we go. A lot of times, I'll wear a hat to accent an outfit. Hats are a good way to cover your head. Hello, I'm wearing the same outfit, but no hat. This is a much softer look, one that leaves your head uncovered. Did you recognize me? Accessories can really make an outfit, like this belt, gloves, sword, and eye patch. This used to be a boring old pantsuit. <laughs> a leisure suit is great for comfort. I added sneakers to make me look like a lesbian. The pattern played has been around for 12 billion years. Don't get me started about the history of played. <laughs> Why can't I get you started? First of all, it's not pronounced played. And what amazing stories do you have about the history of played? Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me started about the history of played. It's so funny. So, Julie, how did difficult people come about? Yeah. I I met Billy years ago and the two of us just really connected and really loved each other's work and we're mutual fans. And I wrote for Billy on the Street. Billy on the Street. We got to, knew, we got to know each other. Uh, you owe Mark Shaman $10,000 right now. <laughs> um, and uh, after we got to know each other a couple of years, I said, you know, I have an idea for a pilot and the two of us play best friends. Um, what do you think? And he's like, all right, you know. And I wrote this pilot and then he liked it and so did Amy Poehler and so we pitched it and then we got to make it. So, I mean, it's a, it's a deceptively simple story. But and how many people were like, we love it. We are calling Renee Zellweger to play opposite Bill. Like, I mean, how hard was it for you to be in it? Were they like, we don't, we need someone famous or was it easy? Th that was never discussed, but maybe it would still be on the air if Renee Zellweger were the lead. I mean, she's very funny. <laughs> Is she? All right. Let us see your amazing co-star, yes. Mr. Billy Eichner. Hi, Billy. Hi. <laughs> By the way, I love that you're both both musical theater people at heart underneath it all. Because I know you were you used to sing up a storm back in the day. When did you decide to not fully um pursue singing? Are you talking to me? Yes, man. I'm making <laughs> eye contact that you way. You can't see that. Stuff. Oh, okay. I see. Um uh... Um, I never like made a conscious decision. I just 
I was going on lots of weird open calls for musicals in New York uh, in the years right after I graduated college and wasn't really getting anywhere with that. So decided to lean into the comedy world. Um, although I was kind of an odd man out too in that world. I wish I had known Julie at that point, but I had did not know her yet. This is way before I met Julie. And so I started writing at this one man show for myself, which did actually it wasn't a one man show. It was a two hander with me and my uh, dear friend Robin Lord Taylor. He was the straight man to my like crazy gay, uh, angry talk show host. And we did a live show all over New York. And there were songs in the show. I actually sang in that show. But then when we turned Billy on the Street into a TV show years later, there just wasn't room for singing. Sometimes I try to jam some music in there, but it did not feel organic to what we were doing and so people just didn't know hmm. so billy on you know i've always loved your billy on the street stuff and way back when you're doing it at ars nova what's the deal like who the hell's taking off their castanets <laughs> i don't know what that is hold on i'm gonna mute you for a second so you uh -oh. make a difference uh-oh billy that's me yep so i'm muting you mute Ah, away. okay. I'll I'll take you off mute, but I want an answer. <laughs> when you sort of you know confront these people on the street, and Julie, obviously you're around when it happens. Like, and then you go, "Ooh, by the way, will you sign a release?" I got people like, "No, I look like a crazy person. I'm not signing a release." What happens with that? Um, we have a team of producers that follow me around and an amazing production assistants, and basically, I do my thing with whatever person I just uh, you know spoke to and. And then someone, a producer, or one of our PAs goes up to that person and tries to explain what just happened. <laughs> and then, you know, they, they explain it's a comedy show, I'm doing a character, et cetera, et cetera. And then they try to get them to sign the release. And, you know, we've gotten pretty good at explaining the show in a way where people want to sign and New Yorkers are smart and they get it. And you either want to be on TV or you don't care or you absolutely don't want to. And so the person makes their choice and that's it. You know, we don't really fight with people. If they don't want to sign, they don't want to sign. Is the ratio pretty high then, Billy, that people go ahead and sign? Now it is, yeah. We've gotten really good. You know, we figured out how to talk to people in a way to explain the show to them and make sure they have context for it. Also, now we have years of videos to show them so we can pull up a video yeah on our phones and say, hey, he did a video with Michelle Obama and this person and it's legit and it's a right. character and most people get it, you know? There are so many clips to choose from, but just for, if no one's seen Billy on the street, here's just a signature, hilarious moment that made me laugh so hard. Oh God. Miss, for a dollar, name a woman. Name a woman? Yes. Um. Who? Who? No, name a woman. Name a woman? Yes. <laughs> um. Yoga bag, name a woman. Sorry. No, name a woman. Name a woman? Yes, go. Any? Yes. Oh my god. Yes. This is so hard. Name a woman. Um. Name a woman. Oh. Name a woman. <laughs> no. Katy Perry. Oh, oh my god. Uh, oh my god. Chris Tucker's back. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Tucker's back. <laughs> Who cares? So yeah, it's, it's so funny. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Julie Closer, how did you? Oh, from UCB. That's how I'm muting you because the, the crazy cast didn't have to drive me. Kind of, I mean, Billy and I both did stuff at UCB, but we kind of never really. I mean, we did stuff at UCB. We did stuff in the cabaret world, and then we both sort of, you know, found each other, um, sensibility wise. So mm -hmm. it was, uh, it was kismet. It was a shidduch. It was shidduch. And then how did you? You got you got to Amy Poehler through UCB through Upright Citizens Brigade. That's how you were able to pitch to her. Yes, I got to her. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I met I met Amy doing UCB. Come on, man, it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I've known her for years. She's the best. Everything that oh. you've heard about Amy, she's a million times greater. Like everything that you'd want her to be, she's even better. So then, after you wrote it, I know you wrote this great role for a mom, and then you emailed me, and you were like, "Oh, you guys are friends with Andrew Martin." Was Andrew Martin in your mom when you asked me to, you know? Put in the good word. Did you was she in your mind when you wrote it? Yes. Ah, oh, I love that. Okay, so I'm gonna bring I'm gonna so bring on she's here. yeah, so she's here. Billy, I'm gonna unmute you, but if I hear those castanets. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Panic. What? <laughs> Have you ever Who? considered a 
platform other than StreamYard? Is it? I don't. Are you eating nuts? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not doing anything. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe why don't you log out, out and I'll and come back in again? I'm gonna log you out and come right back. So, pick from studio. Wow, that's rude. By the way, it's spring, and as I'm talking, there's literally an ant on my table. The amount of <laughs> ants we have in this house are gonna make me vomit. Um, okay, so here we go. Here so, we here go. comes your lovely mother, the wonderful Andrea Martin. Hello, hi, Julie, hi, TV daughter, mom. Hey guys, can I ask you this before we go any further? How do I make this little screen bigger? I can barely see faces. Is there? Is there oh, you want a lap? You want a laptop? Yeah. There should be a square on top. There should be a square on top that you click. A square on. I could watch whatever. I could watch this for hours. I, I know. Andrea, By the way, Andrea, we were talking twenty minutes before the show. You didn't ask me then. Yeah, we well, were because I didn't see four people. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm squinting. I just you, this yeah, is. We'll get rid of us. We'll get rid I of us. You it. truly talk. I love this. <laughs> you know what? I, I can we just talk to Julie because she knows everything. I miss she's you. Beautiful. She's fun. Look how close I am now to the camera because I can't see anything. I love you. Here, I give you. me a kiss. I miss you. Give me a kiss. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Okay, stop that nonsense. So, Andy Martin, you've done so many TV shows. What was the difference doing this TV show versus the other ones you've done? Uh, working with Julie was really unique working with Billy, working with a cast and uh, working with uh, the material, which was so sharp and funny and satirical and, and, you know, real. So it was, I mean, I love all the shows I do, but this was honestly, this is, this is from the, the mind of Julie Klausner. And I think that she tapped in something that no other TV show did or has done. I'm so sorry that Hulu didn't pick it up again because I think it's the only take on pop culture or this world that anybody's doing. I think it was um, uh, uh, truly unique. So, you know, uh, in hip, it's something I don't normally do. So I <laughs> very, very good to be in something cool. <laughs> Julie, why did you think of Andrea for the part? What what were you a fan of hers from? SCTV. I mean, there's nobody funnier. And she's and I'd also seen her on Broadway. I saw her in Young Frankenstein. And I mean, she's the real deal. Mm -hmm. I saw her in Pippin. I leapt to my feet mid-act one for a, a standing ovation, which has never happened before in anything I'd ever seen. She's unbelievable, but um, she taught me so much about not just being a better actor, but being a better writer. She, um, she really helped me figure out like the uh, the story of the scene. And she would always point out to me like, this seems to be off the path. And she was always right. And it just, it, 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 she was just, she is so inspiring. Wow. Did the role of the mother of your mom change from your first conception after working with Andrea? Mm. Did you make her more something? Oh, absolutely. I mean, once once you hear Andrea Martin deliver certain lines, you're going to keep pushing that particular note of the symphony, even though you know that that instrument can go a lot of different places. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I should have did my own analysis. Yeah. I, I oh, feel like funny. the role is kind of a com. I thought it's kind of a combination of two of Andrew Martin's classic characters. <laughs> so this is first a scene I thought from Hedvig, where it's the very mm -hmm. glamorous agent, and it's where you have the phone implanted in your tooth. It's so good. Here we go. The photographer's gonna meet us at the store. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. You comes and goes. Bill Graham. I'm at Erdogan. Geffen Schmeffen. The red eye. <laughs> Hold on, Chris. Pull up my new phone. And it's surgically implanted. Hold on, Chris. Hedvig. Hedvig. It's an old friend from CBG because he wants to say hello. Say hello. Right there. Try it. Hello. Uh, <laughs> he says he loves your work. Uh, Meet love. Bowie. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I love the name dropping. The red eye. <laughs> Shut up. Jeff and 
And then there's this the other character. I had no idea who those people were, but I, you know, I put my shoulder behind it. John Cameron Mitchell, so smart. How look at all the great people that I've been able to work with. Seriously. John Cameron Mitchell, Julie, Billy. I mean Did you say great or gay? What? <laughs> Did you say great or gay? <laughs> and is there a difference, Andrea? Look at the great gay people I've got. <laughs> Andrea, this is the other character that I feel inhabits the mom because it's the the crazy narcissism. Look how you literally can't, you ask a question and within one second you can't sit still because you're completely self-obsessed. <laughs> I love this so much. Very good. What in your mind today is the biggest problem that women face today? Well, Libby, as you know, women face a wide range of problems and have right through time. Our mothers and our mother's mothers all suffered a wide variety of problems, certainly indigenous to women. But I think we're correct in focusing in on the woman's problem, the woman in the 80s. The woman who is saying, hey, I'm aware that I'm living in a man's world. I am prepared to cope with it, but I want to change it. What about weight? <laughs> Um, of course. Libby Wolfson, by the way, is a huge influence to me as a uh, performer and as a Jewish uh, person that thinks about her weight a lot. And um, Frozen. We did a uh, we did a tribute to Libby Wolfson's one woman show in season one. I'm taking my own head and screw it on right, and no man's gonna tell me that at eight. Um, but uh, I mean, everything Andrea did on that show, like I, I can't, I can't, so I won't. <laughs> and how much, you know, people always ask this, but was there, would you kind of film it once and then be like, now we're going to improv, or was it always scripty script? No, we had some fun. I mean, Andrea's allowed to do whatever she wants. Which yeah, she but, no, constantly. but when you know, when you, when there's a really great script, you don't want to improvise. You can't do better than what's there. I mean, maybe I threw in a couple of words, but not, I wasn't like I was revamping the scene. Yeah, but you came up with some good, like, as they call them in the biz, blows. Although I heard you come out with some good blows in general, Andrea. Your <laughs> reputation precedes you, my friend. But in addition to that, like if you know what it is, my from your mouth to God's ears. Um, if you needed a good joke to end the scene on, Andrea is your gal. It's like having a, uh, I don't know, is a sports person to throw the sports when you need it, the sports throw. <laughs> I love that. And you know, you talk about all the guest stars and. You know, we're, we've watched the Tina Fey episode so many times. Andrea and Tina Fey together, so crazy hilarious. Yeah. Julie, who's been like, you've, who's been one of your favorite guest stars? Because they've been so, basically like the so many. titans Gosh. of comedy on the show. Um, Chris Elliott was incredibly fun. Um, we had Lin-Manuel play himself, um, which was exhilarating. That was such a strange day because I know we had Lin and also like two Real Housewives that day. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we had John Turturro, the, the last scene that Andrea shot for the series was with Turturro, and, and I could watch a spinoff of just those two mm -hmm. um, having a relationship. I really, really, I mean, that was kind of like the, you know, rock and roll fantasy camp of it was that you got to write scenes for like Andrea Martin and John Turturro and, and then watch mm -hmm. them actually do it. And that was amazing. Their chemistry was flawless. That was crazy because I was, really, really crazily shut down and intimidated because I was a huge fan of John Turturro. And I was like, oh God, please, please God, please let me just stay in character. And then we had to kind of kiss in the scene and my I hadn't kissed anybody since 1978. So that was difficult. And then I was attracted to him and then it was supposed to be funny, but thank you for the gift. <laughs> it was funny, Andrea, it was funny. It was great. <laughs> I love the two of you together. We'll have to write something where the two of you are just naked and making love for <laughs> And then we'll say, oh no, I forgot to put film in the camera. We'll have to do this tomorrow. Now, by the way, I keep showing these other clips because like there are no difficult people clips on YouTube. I was trying to take them, but there's like nothing there. I think like Hulu has their mitts in them. So FYI, that's why we're just talking about it, not showing clips. But Julie, I've got to give you a shout out because you, you were the one that asked me to come on to your show called Obsessed in like 2007, which is like one of my most viewed sketches. So that was a comedy show you had live where what, people came on and talked about what they were obsessed with. Was that the theme of it? Mm -hmm. And were you the one who asked me to specifically do Turkey Lurkey? Yeah, I, I'm obsessed with uh, Donna McKechnie's performance in that. Um, and I knew that you had a take on it, so. 
It's so great. Right. This is this is this is literally right when I met James. This is like I think like January, I think 2007. This is the clip from Obsessed. It, it really I can't tell many people watch this, and it's because you asked me to be in it. Wow. The end of Act One was a song called It's what I'm obsessed with this video is that it's like the worst song in the world, yet the most brand at the same time. So first of all, the song is called Turkey Lurkey. Now <laughs> it's crazy. So this is the map. It's so 60s. Lyrics, it's circular time. Tom Turkey ran away, but he just came home. Then, what the hell? <laughs> I'm just gonna do a crazy, but God, coming up. Here we go, ready? And wow! <laughs> I had the best time doing that. So I'm just, I'm so thankful you asked me to do that. It's like my first time really deconstructing a video live. All right, so we've, we've got to bring on a million other cast members. Number one time, Seth. We thought was bad, remember? What'd you say? We thought Bush was bad, remember? Simple oh, don't, times. I, don't get me started. Oh, this president so bad. Hold on, Billy's Billy on the street. I is, just see a black screen with Billy. I think that David is trying, trying to, to help him. To help, but so I think maybe. Okay, so hold on. So we're gonna extend Andrea. So Andrea, we're Andrea, piecing out on you. You know we're gonna see you soon. Yeah, you got a play oh, coming up. I've been on your show so much. People are sick of me. Get no. to the room, people. Bye. All right, bye, Andrea. We love you. Bye, Andrea. We love you. Bye, bye, Andrea. Andrea. <laughs> okay, so then hopefully then there'll be some room for David to help Billy get on. Okay, in so the now meantime, let's bring on. We tried to do this very we organized stuff. We're style. trying to be. So we're gonna bring on Cole. Where's Hopey Cole? Hi, Cole. Hi. Cole. Hi, Julie. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Bring on your husband, James. Oh, hello. Look at well, you with your a beard. Welcome to my home. We are all Brenda Dixon now. Oh, honey, you look like a caveman. I'm loving Thank it. you. <laughs> I, would have, I don't own any bow ties, otherwise I would have dressed in character, you know. <laughs> I don't think gonna... Arthur would ever have a beard like that. No, well, I come off as a Felix Unger or an Arthur, but I'm really an Oscar Madison, so I really am a kind of beardy slob in real life. There are people in Los Angeles <laughs> who do not recognize James on the street because he does not dress like a, a natty kind of professor. <laughs> um, I have a couple of friends that have seen you at the 7-Eleven uh, uh, in Los Feliz, and yes. I saw this, like, this guy in this like really old 80s t-shirt that kind of looked like James Urbaniak. I'm like, exactly. that's, that's James Urbaniak. You saw James Urbaniak. I was a bit more, when I lived in New York, I was a bit more of a dandy. There would be uh, uh, cardigans and layering, but here it's it's sort of t-shirts and hoodies. Yeah, you guys don't care. I get it. Where <laughs> yeah. is always head to toe in a, a leather yeah. undergarment from my But Hello, and hello, Cole. So good to see you. Great hey, job. by the way, we have um, Billy on the street. Yay! Daddy's uh, back! Daddy's back! Daddy's you know, back! He's angry. This would have never happened at the Saturday Night Seder. Because <laughs> that was no pre recorded. Technical difficulties. That was pre recorded, Mother Epper. And then finally, <laughs> let us bring on, speaking of Saturday Night Seder, she's still That's having true. a Seder right now. <laughs> she's one of those really long Seders. Jackie Jack Hoffman! Ah, uh, yeah. Jackie, did you? I think you muted yourself, which is shocking. <laughs> Jackie, you have to unmute. unmute yourself. Hold on, click the mute. Oh, yeah. There she goes. Click She's the mute. Hold, please. Here we go. You can't silence uh, Jackie Hoffman. Got it. Why is this mute different than all other mutes? <laughs> <laughs> I, so, Julie, tell me, and, and also Billy, I don't know if you were involved, but tell me about the casting process. How did you think of these clowns? Oh, I I wrote all these roles specifically for these actors. Oh, wow. And no one else there was no one else in mind. I mean Jackie Hoffman is Ruffel, like Cole <laughs> Matthew, Arthur's James. I don't understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I was thinking. Okay, so wait, Jackie, first I gotta talk to you for a second. You know, I'm I'm so obsessed with so much of the stuff you did, but I was just listening recently. Your dreidel is so hilarious that you did for um, Broadway Cares, the dreidel song. I, you have to listen to it because I'm obsessed with the word. Anything. Billy, I'm muting you. Hold on. If I hear that crackling. <laughs> Poor Billy. Saturday Night Seder. <laughs> there we go. All right, Jack, I'm obsessed with how you sing the word learn. Now, when you learn, now, when you learn, it's literally an oval on the word learn. Here we go. Listen how great you are. I'm obsessed. 
Hello, hair sprites. Oh, how precious. You're playing with a dreidel, which is a time-honored tradition for our people. And it's good family fun. Hey, I won. Like hell, I won. No, I won. No, you didn't. Oh, oh, I won. No. Now when you learn to make the dreidel spin, you know how people always when keep spinning. Oh, 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 then your keep spinning at the end is so what yes. <laughs> I will I will allow him one minute of a comment. Billy, what do you have to say? <laughs> and there's talking there's in the background? Else talking. What's happening? <laughs> we not just Mary I don't know Bird. what's happening. Not since Mary Speed Virgin on Friday. Yes. Okay, so wait, I um Okay, let me focus for a second. So, Billy, first of all, where are you, New York or L.A.? I'm in L.A. Okay, and the first question which we always ask people, which we've actually skipped over tonight, James, why don't you ask? It's our signature question. Let's oh, ask Billy. Oh, well, I'm afraid to ask now. <laughs> what do you do to stay healthy during all this, Billy? Yeah, what are you doing to stay sort of mentally and physically healthy? Um... What am I doing to stay healthy? I don't know. I guess I'm doing what everyone else is doing. Um, uh, I text Julie a lot, and uh, we still say terrible things about people, even at this time. Um, uh, and uh, what else do I do? I don't know. I'm watching movies. I'm watching TV shows. I'm watching old movies. I get it. Uh, like, we're gonna leave my roles. Uh, like a question, you know, like watching old. Oh, no, that's what I'm doing. Any working out? Frozen, not since Adina Menzel. <laughs> okay, I'm focusing this. Cole, mm -hmm. okay, I was, of course, doing my research. What is what's the wig obsession? How did that begin? Um. I, I can't talk about it. Um, it I, um, I, I don't know. I just, um, I, I like pretty hair and um, I like a lot of it. <laughs> and did you just pick up a wig and then go, oh my God, this looks like Bernadette. I'm going to play Bernadette. Or were you like, I've got to find a Bernadette wig. And then you found it. Uh, well, I, I, I thought like, I, uh, I was trying to think who I look most like. And I was like, I think if I was were to do a drag impression of anyone, it would be Bernadette Peters because I have a round face, <laughs> um, and um, and huge tits. So I uh, I got the wig, and the rest, as they say, is um, none of your business. <laughs> 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 why why the arm spinning i was so i was watching the video so many times that based in every reality you just decided to be fun to spin the arms nonstop. that's what she does when she sings unexpected song See, I've never... does that swings her arms let's let's see your version of it here we go <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. It's great to visit old work, you know. It is so hilarious. <laughs> okay, that's wait, now for some reason James is muted. Rude. Did we mute him or did he mute himself? Hold on. I'm gonna unmute. Okay, James, you muted yourself, which is no, yeah, that was delayed because it's a very busy household. My wife is actually on a video conference a few <laughs> yards away. So I'm just trying to keep uh, it quiet. We get it. You're married. <laughs> yes. It's, very, it's a very 2020 household here at the old uh, <laughs> the old house. I have so many questions about the show. Julie, why the doggy obsession? Where did you get the doggies? We got them from a professional animal handler. And um, I, I like you. I love animals. You, you love animals. You've got dogs, right? Four. Yeah. But those are not your actual real life dogs. Oh, those are professional dogs. So when the show went off the air, were they? They were killed. Yeah. <laughs> killed. Oh, the comedy. Jeez. It's called Yes and. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. And Jackie Hoffman. <laughs> Julie, did you actually name her Ruffle, or was that Jackie's idea? Because it's no, such no, a. I, name, I, name, I named her Ruffle. 
<laughs> it's so passive aggressive because you know some people can't pronounce it, so it's already alienating people it's just with the name. There was just yeah, there is no question that Jackie Hoffman would play the character of Ruffle. It's just like it's like breathing air. <laughs> I only play people you can't pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> Name me some other signature Jewish characters you play, Jackie Hoppin. Oh, Prudy Pinkleton. <laughs> Grandma Adams. <laughs> Mrs. Hebe. There was a Bella Abzug biopic, I Mama believe, that you started. <laughs> Ju Jackie that Hoppin is me. the best synagogue jokes. Jackie, tell people how how you always know if you're performing for a primarily Jewish audience? Oh, well, if you're performing for a Christian audience, nobody stands up and says, Louder! <laughs> it's always louder. So Julie, Klauser, you're the, 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 the episodes are so intricately plotted. Was it one of those things where like, this really happened to me, I can't wait to put this on a show? Or was it like, what the hell are we gonna write this week? Sometimes the stuff on the show came inspired by things that had happened in real life, but we always tried to take it to a crazy place and then interweave the other stories. Um, Cole was a writer on the show. He was a, a gift and is a gift in the room and beyond. I did nothing, I did nothing. You did too. Would you, you, guys, with, you you got you came up with the whole like the sweet tea thing where everybody's sharing it and that's how everyone oh, yeah. gets high on ayahuasca. That was a cool school uh, situation. And I think I came up with the name Inez. <laughs> By the way, someone just wrote. Oh, you did. Who <laughs> <laughs> to take credit for? <laughs> That's funny. So Mrs. Red, I think Julie Kloster might be a genius. I'm going to watch Difficult People soon as this is over. But I don't know if they're saying they're just discovering your genius right now, so they want to watch this new show they heard about. <laughs> or they've always loved Difficult. Regardless, in the well, end. Let me know when you're sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So before, I mean, I'm going to bring back, I'm going to bring on a lot more people. But what is happening? Like, what's your next TV show that you're writing? I believe you're watching it. Right. <laughs> Pieces. This is sort of a variety on match game, especially when you held up that uh, sign that, yeah. like Charles Nelson used to do. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hold on, Billy, Billy, Billy's back on the street. Let's see what happens this time. One, two, three. <laughs> Billy on the street. Hi, Billy. God bless him that it keeps trying. Hi. I'm trying. You sure are. We so appreciate it. We do appreciate it. Okay, so James, I know that your wife's in a conference call. I don't want to bother you. <laughs> no, no, please, you can. I'll just speak louder than her. It's a what? little war in here. No, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, what? she's done. She's, my wife has finished her video conference. Woo! Your wife so, is done! Yay! The apartment is mine. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Is she a teacher? Is your wife what? a teacher or something? She is an animator, and her company is maintaining their uh, business during this trying time, because they can all do it on their computers. Right. Tell me the bizarre David Letterman story, like that. Oh, what is that, and how did it happen? Oh, you're referring to my appearance on uh, the late uh, late night with David Letterman in 1983. Yeah, when you when were like I was, when I was 19 years old. Uh, well, the short version is I went to see the show, and I uh, I loved the show, of course, and uh, I was very excited to be there, and I went with a friend of mine, and the night before, he had told a joke and messed it up, and so the, the night, yes, and the, the night I was there, he tried the joke again, uh, messed it up again, and then he laughed and said, damn it, this is the second night I've screwed this joke up, and he took a beat, and with the impetuousness of youth, I shouted out, can I try it? And he brought me on stage and then I told the joke very badly. <laughs> <laughs> it's really embarrassing that that footage is still out there, but that's what happened. We I wouldn't, well, let's judge for ourselves how you told it. Oh, you have the clip. <laughs> yes, I have. Right. This, is, this is me at 19. This is the first time I ever saw myself on TV. I was very nervous. I was looking at the monitors and I realized what I had just done was a bad idea. But go ahead, I'm also wearing some nice 80s glasses. Yeah, you don't seem, you don't seem nervous though. It's actually adorable, here. Oh, I'm-, I'm Do you have any joke telling experience? Uh, Not that no. it does any good, obviously, but- uh, Okay, well, let me, I covered the cigarette butt, so you don't, you don't need to do that. Okay, okay. There, there it is, number one, right there. 
Oh, well, you know, it's like written in little words here. Uh, okay, uh, new lottery. You can, uh, oh, this is the, okay, all right. You know, the uh, New York City uh, Parole Board has a new lottery. Uh, you can win a chance at a brutal crime spree. <laughs> The uncanny thing about that is I now have a son who's about to turn 14 and I strongly resemble him in that clip. <laughs> Chris, you do. Amazing. <clears throat> Wait, so do we have any onset mistake stories? Like one time the dog peed right on my joke or? <laughs> no, it's more like one one day the dog did what it was supposed to do. It was more like, yeah. Any Jackie, how about did your shade will fall off? Any kind of onstage, onset story I need to know about? Girl, I want my own hair. Well, the most the most notable mishap was when a truck uh, ran into a group of trailers that were outside, uh, and several, and uh, caused a lot of damage. And fortunately, no one was seriously hurt, but it could have been catastrophic. Billy was, was in, Billy in was the trailer at the time. Billy, yeah, Billy was thrown across his trailer by a boar's head meat truck on a yeah. Yeah. Oh An event that was later obliquely <laughs> referenced in another script because no one was seriously was hurt. <laughs> it also, I heard Andrea's trailer almost got hit, and when I heard Andrea Martin was almost killed, I started practicing my trapeze work. Such <laughs> <laughs> an asshole. Jeez. God. <laughs> God. But we were, uh, uh, the god of comedy was watching over everybody and no one got uh, smashed. <laughs> that is scary, man. It was scary. Yeah, my, my, my trailer had a big hole in it, but I wasn't in it at the time. So oh I, I, was, I was on the set. But yeah, that was not a funny mishap, but it worked out okay. A terrifying one. Well, I'm still here. <laughs> and Cole, people are commenting on how much they love you on the Amy Sedaris show. What's it like working on that show? Heaven. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it's like being in a cartoon. Mm -hmm. But Julie's worked with them, um, uh, and and I met her doing difficult people. You met Amy? Um, yeah, I met Amy. Um, she played the um, uh, the minister at my wedding. Among and then she worked at a what was it a, a sporting, sporting goods good store at one yeah. point, and then she yeah. was a tour guide in the third season. Yeah, yeah. Kept, she and Debbie Harry were in a lesbian relationship. Yeah. And they kept talking. Nice. <laughs> Julie, we have an important question. Um, do, do you still have the clown whore costume? Okay, that could mean two things. One is Patches, who was a mentally disabled balloon salesman. And the other is the time that I was like in a fashion show that was clown themed. Neither of those characters are sex workers. Um, so yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think what happened is in both of those costumes, you emanated an erotic frisson, which this person is describing, uh, framing in that way. That's that would be DNA, my theory. Baby. Yes, it's my DNA. <laughs> James, how much? Who are you basing your your character on? Because you're obviously much more mellow. Who are you basing your uptight bow tiedness on? I think that's just. You see, the funny thing for me is I didn't think he was uptight. I I thought he was like a nice guy. And that's why I love playing that because normally I, most of my TV work is like playing killers and red herrings and perverts and procedurals. <laughs> so no one ever cast me as a relatively normal person. So I was just delighted that she cast me as like, <laughs> he's sort of a straight man in a way, but uh, you know, I have, I have a certain persnickety default yeah. that I guess uh, I drew from that it's there, you know? <laughs> Even though if you lived with me, you'd realize I'm a slob. <laughs> but I'm trying, right, honey? <laughs> she's she's back on a conference yeah. call. Yeah, yeah, she's back. Um, she, she, whenever she doesn't to... want to talk to me, she pretends she's on a conference call. <laughs> Jackie, I found this fun clip that we did together just to show how quick you are. This is from um, when we, I was doing Disaster on Broadway. I invited some of the original Hairspray cast members to come on stage, and people bid for you guys to sing from Hairspray, and they gave money to Broadway Cares. So you were so you weren't in the show, but you know Carrie Butler was, and just listen how how you sassed her very well because Carrie forgot her lyrics. You're, you're very quick thinking, Jackie. Here we are. That's your go-to complaint, but it really worked there. 
Yes, now it's true for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. All right, we got to bring on our, our diner workers, right? That's we right. Brought on some. All right, so Perfect, yeah. we're going to say goodbye. Is Billy still muted? Um, I'm uncomfortable with him speaking. He is a foul mouth. Now let's try it. Aww. One, two, three. Billy. Yourself. It's bad over here. Yeah, very bad. Billy, we're just, we're just enjoying your pretty face. Yes, and it's so, nice seeing you. Comfortable <laughs> nodding. So you just, you just stay right there. We'll put you on mute. You can nod. You can <laughs> nod. Okay, so we're going to peace out to Ms. Hoffman. Go observe Shemini and Saris. Bye, whatever's Jackie. happening. We love you, Jack. Bye, Jackie. Bye, and James. Bye, James. Go get your bow tie ironed. <laughs> Cole, go straighten those well, curls. Cole, Cole worked in the cafe, but oh, we do, don't have. We do we only have. Yeah, we don't have enough screens. Six. Unfortunately. I understand. Sorry, Sorry, Cole. So go straighten the screen. Okay, then we have. So here we have the lovely Gabby. Hi, Gabby. Hi. Hi. I never met you. I think you know my friend Lindsay Lavin from a thousand yeah, years. We've met plenty of times, Seth. What? Yes, we have. We've met a bunch. And I must have been super. I remember Lindsay saying, "I know Gabby," and I felt like too intimidated to ever. Mentioned. No, we talked a bunch. We talked about Lindsay, and I could not remember her name until you just said it. Because she used to be my friend Adam. Well, right back at you, and I couldn't remember you. So I guess we're even. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we are. Hi, Billy. Hi, Julie. Hi, Gabby. Hi. Where's the kitty? Oh, literally right here. Aaron? Oh. Hey, hi, Aaron. I did not know that he was trapped in here with me. He just jumped up there, scared the shit out of me. <laughs> he is the love of your life, and mine, possibly. Yeah, yeah. I like him way more than I like my boyfriend. <laughs> I don't. I'm obsessed with my dog, all my dogs. All right, we got Shakina here. Hi, Shakina. Hi. Haven't seen you in so long. Good to see I know. you. Good to see you. I'm so glad to be here. Hi, everybody. Hi, Billy. Hi, Julie. Hi, Gabby. I just texted you. Hi, Shakina. <laughs> Billy says hi. I'll translate. Billy says hi. Okay. And then we have the lovely Broadway star, Derek Baskin. What's up, y'all? Woo! Derek. What's up? Okay, so Julie, were all these roles also written for them? Surely you didn't write every single role for every person you've ever met. Like, didn't Absolutely. anybody audition? Yes, yes. So you just had like first choice. I love it. So, she, so a, a couple of things I have to say. So, first of all, Derek, yeah, I know it's I know it's mean, uh -oh. and I know don't I do it. Don't do it. it. I'm sorry, girl. I don't think everybody knows this story, and I think it's important that you share it with everybody. Oh, come on now. Well, we're getting some dish. We know that Derek Baskin's an amazing singer. So surely come if you were on Derek, now. You would say, when I grow up, I'm going to be a singer. He's going to move to New York and be a singer. So Derek Baskin did move to New York, but not to be a singer. Derek, please tell everybody what your number one job <laughs> dream was when you moved here. I ain't saying it no more, man. I ain't doing it. I ain't playing this game. <laughs> I ain't playing this game with you. Man. Oh, my God, you told me. I'll, don't make me reveal it. All right, all right, all right. Damn it. All right. Shit. I wanted to be a. Uh, I want to sing. Sorry, language. Uh, I wanted to. Um, I want to sing jingles, but I wanted to be a hand model. Oh. We'll show the hands. Have nice hand model. I'm saying, I'm saying I can hold a phone. You mm. know, I can shave. <laughs> <laughs> It's so specific. It's very specific. It is. It is. But it's the truth. Did you know like a famous hand model and you were like, that's my idol. One day I'll be. Listen, someone told me you have very, very nice cuticles and you have a nice hand. And you know what? You should give you should give a shot at hand modeling. And I took that and bought a ticket to New York. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you ever get hired? Never. Not once. That was. There's still time. You got to moisturize, girl. <laughs> yeah, I got to moisturize, man. Okay, so Shakina, I feel like you're hey. you're such a combination of everything. You're like actress, activist. Like, what are you focusing on right now? Getting through it, Seth. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'm trying to figure out like uh, how I should be handling it, I guess. And I know that I want to be making some kind of like output to share and bring positive energy into the world, but I, I haven't quite figured out what my quarantine voice is yet. But I I'm here. Yeah. It's supposed to be tomorrow night, so we'll be watching that. Can I say that on the air? I don't know. Wait, what are you doing tomorrow night? One more time, what? <laughs> uh, Manifest Pussy, my solo show that now I'm saying twice on the air. <laughs> That's okay. You've done that everywhere. You're, you're doing a live version of that tomorrow? 
not live, but the um, the first recording of it ever that I think Julie was at the night before I left for North Carolina. Uh, yeah, yeah. Musical Theater Factory, Musical Theater Factory is screening it as like because they got to raise their money too. Right. So um, I'm we're doing like a YouTube premiere on the Musical Theater Factory channel. Eight o'clock. Yeah. Oh. Is that this? Is that the organization that you're sort of a part of, like raising money for new creation? Yeah, I mean, I started it. Yeah, um, it's a, a it's all new musicals, uh, mostly by underrepresented writers. Um, and yeah, it's a, now I don't have anything to do with it other than I left it in good hands, and um, occasionally they like share my stuff. <laughs> but I think that's how we met was through our mutual friend Joey Monda, right? And then you came into yeah. for America, and you yep. introed Ingrid Michaelson. Yeah. I did. That's right. That was a really lovely moment. Uh, yeah. I was going to have Ingrid come on tonight. I was texting with her, but she had like a Zoom writing conference right when this was happening. I was going to have her surprise you. Mm -hmm. But I found this great clip of you singing. I love but I, <laughs> I love it because you do my favorite thing, which is when you go into head voice, you, you mix the high note with your hand. I thought it was so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that was great. Great. I do that all the time as a joke. I love that you did it here. It's right on the high F. Here we go. We're gonna make some brand new musicals. Afford to take some brand new musicals. <laughs> <laughs> do you do that when you're rehearsing? Why are you doing that in performance? <laughs> Uh, no, because it was a, it was a, um, it was like a, a joke video that we made for um, uh, Gregory Maguire, who wrote the original book of Wicked before it became the musical. He has a, the the Elphaba Foundation, and so actually the very first major grant that we got from Musical Theater Factory was a gift from the Elphaba Fund, and so I made that video as like a, you know, a parody. Thank you. So yeah, it was just me in the back of the porn studio with a fan blowing on my face and some green paint. It is so good. And by the way, you have an audience member. Ah, oh, audience member who wants to know, how can people access oh. Shakina's show tomorrow? Oh, well, thank you for asking, New York Energizer. Um, it just, uh, it's gonna be on youtube.com slash MTFNYC, the Musical Theater Factory's uh, YouTube channel. But it'll be all over my socials, Shakina's, you can't miss it, I'll be blasting it everywhere. Maybe my cast mates from Difficult People will help uplift. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. Julie, have you seen Derek in any of his myriad of Broadway musicals? Yes, I, I he was I was nominated for a Tony. I don't know if you know that. It's very <laughs> exciting, Julie. You know, I call I call Julie Boss Lady. So she, when I got nominated, she's one of the first people to send me an email and congratulate me. I was, I was like, thanks that for coming. Thrilling. Me. That was and, and hopefully the the without a doubt the first of many. Derek's oh, team right. out of this world. Stop. Julie, yeah, so what we him to do. And and the great thing is. Everybody on screen now, and pretty much everyone in the cast can sing. I mean, everyone's sort of like Broadway ready. Uh, <laughs> really talented, fabulous that. cast. Um, I mean, it, like, I almost, I wish we could have given them more because like, if you look at all this talent, it's just it's ridiculous. It makes me sick, Seth. I like when you ask me what Broadway sings. Broadway sings, I got five on it. That's the thing about New York. You know, you have these people who can do everything and they're just happy to, you know, to bring what they have to the role, but I just their their talent is just overwhelming. And Gabby, I found like a video of you singing. I'm like, why is there only a video of you singing on a weird flip phone <laughs> phone to the side? Like, and that's the only one I've ever found. Like, well, you have such a good voice. So what's happening with that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I sure I can sing. I think that like it's. I think my mom is a really really great singer, and that keeps me from ever singing professionally. For now, until she dies. God forbid. <laughs> no, she's gonna die. Gonna hurt. Gonna hurt. But I think I don't know. It sort of feels like you know she's like really. My mom is like really. Um, a really, really good singer, and it always feels like my whole life is like, can you sing like your mom? And so now I don't try. I have my lane. I sing for fun in the shower. She's She's never tried out for professional musical. I have actually. I've uh, yeah. I mean, like when I was sort of when I was doing college theater, they were mostly musicals, and so I was. Uh, oh, freeze frame. Linda the Good Witch, was and. Oh, I've sung a bunch of stuff. I I did audition for Into the Woods, the movie, 
But I auditioned for Little Red and I kept being like, are they sure they want me to audition for Little Red Riding Hood because I'm a grown up black woman um, and, not, and not like a small child. And they were like, no, we want you. So I auditioned and then they cast a small child. So yeah. Okay. So I was researching, of course. So I was looking at- Oh my at God, can you guys not hear me? Yeah. No, we can hear we you. Got you. We got you. No, we heard the whole Into the Woods dish. <laughs> so Gabby, I was researching and I found your audition for Precious, which you were amazing in. Mm. So that audition, have you ever seen that audition clip of you for Precious? I can't tell if you can't hear me. I don't know if you can hear yourself. Oh no, not when the internet is. Can you hear me, Gabby? Gabs? Yeah, I've seen it. So you've seen you've seen the clip of you auditioning for Precious. I can hear you. Yeah, you're oh. I, It got a little wonky, but yeah, the audition for Precious. Yeah. Okay. So your acting is amazing. Yeah. Can we discuss your quote unquote acting partner? Who was reading with you? Wait, it's just I can't hear anything. Who was your acting partner in your in your audition? Your reader. Oh, who was my uh, no one? It was the reader. So okay. Were you as it was just the reader? It was just the casting people. See, like when I auditioned, I it was my Wait, so I don't Wait, what? <laughs> One more time, your internet is so wonky. Uh, <laughs> I'm missing the best story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of choreography. It's so wonky. I can't hear anything. Yeah, the last thing I heard was who was my reader, and it was just like a casting person. Yeah, but but were you as devastated as I was from the acting talent? Okay, all I see is laughing. I, okay, all I can say is, let's just all watch. You guys, okay. Gabby's acting is unbelievable. Devastated about what? The, the, <laughs> the, the acting level of the reader that was with you. Do I have to text you? <laughs> yeah. Or Derek or Shakina can translate. Yeah. Can you can you text Gabby and ask the question before I <laughs> Okay. So, so now it's 10 yeah, 30. Okay, <laughs> huh? All right, Seth, say the question and I'm gonna try to repeat. Difficult people are difficult why. Yeah, I understand Derek. Derek, you say it. You understand me. All right, what you got, Seth? Was was Gabby as devastated as I was from the acting? No, my Wi-Fi is fine. I can hear Derek. Were you <laughs> devastated by the acting of your reader? Were you devastated by the acting of your reader, the person who was helping you on your audition? Talk about oh, the so power level of your reader. Okay, for that specific audition, yeah, not really because it was my first audition, and I don't know how things are supposed to go. Like I'm still to this day, like I don't. I'm not great at auditioning. I don't know how it's supposed to go. And so, no, she was fine. I got the part, so I wasn't devastated about anything. <laughs> okay, well, let's just take 10 seconds and watch this. Gabby's acting, sorry, honey. Gabby's acting is so amazing. And the person with her, it's almost as if it's English as a second language. Like, <laughs> there's no emotion. And she's sort of shocked by the words she has to say. And poor Gabby's like so in the moment and brilliant. I'm just obsessed with how good you are and how I don't know what's happening on the other side. ESL, as we say. Here we go. Your baby okay? Yeah, he good. Yeah, he good. Just gotta stop breastfeeding him to be safe. One time in your journal, you, t you told me that you had never really told your story. Right. For what? How? I feel like feel like what? Like I'm drowning in a giant river. You had never told your story. <laughs> right. Feel like what? Feel like what? I can't. <laughs> You're amazing. And then it's just a person in a state of shock. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Anywho, Derek Baskin, how is your entire cast dealing with Broadway being shut down? Uh, you know, we're all staying in contact with each other. Um, uh, you know, we're just all trying to make sure that we support each other. It came kind of really fast, you know, so, uh, I'm necessarily, I'm kind of concerned with people who, um, don't necessarily have the savings. Um, just making sure that, uh, you know, everyone has at least the very least grocery money and, um, 
So we're all just kind of just staying in contact with, your, with each other just to make sure that everyone's okay. And we're kind of like pooling our resources just to support each other. And you're telling them to go to the Actors Fund if they need it, right? Yes, absolutely. We sure. know about that for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, anyone that's having problems with like rent, health insurance, all that yeah. kind of stuff. You so know, it just came so sudden. And, um, you know, people think like Broadway, a lot of times it's like a, you know, you're making all this money, but a lot of times, especially in the ensemble, you know, you're not really making that much money. And sometimes you're still living paycheck to paycheck. And so when something like this happens, um, you're just not necessarily prepared for it. And, you know, you just want to make sure, I, I'm trying to make sure that my friends are like, okay. That's nice. Shakina, you're sort of from the downtown theater scene. Do you have friends that are struggling right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, not only downtown theater scene, but also like a bunch of like trans artists who also have like, a, a, you know, so many obstacles already in their past. So um, there are a lot of, I think, mutual aid networks that are starting to pop up. Um, actually, one of the things that we're trying to do here is start a hydroponic garden in the backyard so we can grow produce for ourselves and uh, our neighbors and some friends in the neighborhood. So yeah, just trying to find ways to be there for each other. Yeah. Yeah, and like we said, go to Actors Fund if you need help. By the way, I got an emergency text from Jackie Hoffman. I was the reader at Gabby's audition. <laughs> <laughs> so people want to keep watching Difficult People. They just go to Hulu, right? Yeah. I guess. Now and forever, <laughs> like Pat. Are you one of those people, Julie, like, I can't watch myself on screen, or you watch yourself? I I, I hate it, but I, I love performing so i i got i gotta do it it's such a hilarious show i'm i'm gonna just show one final clip to show up derek derek i found this clip oh geez <laughs> no it's good it's so cute i i don't even remember doing this i was playing for you at um at sirius xm but this, this had to be probably 10 years ago ah yeah 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 me and james and jay yes and monroe I james monroe, monroe eigelhart is behind and then you do an amazing riff and he's like it's like a lot of like nodding. It's That's so my best friend, man. It's so cute. So I'm fucking out on the piano and you're sassafrassing. You sound amazing. Here we go. Every you want me to mute or something in My hair's still short. <laughs> I'm so, looking for a shoe to throw at you. <laughs> I mean, he's just so effortlessly like. If I watch him and Shakita sing, it's just like it just it's just so natural and strong and knock it mm -hmm. off. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, the people, the musical. Uh, yeah, right, right. Oh, man, we got it. Right. Yeah. That's what I was told this was raising funds for. Am I wrong? Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do. It's a backup audition. Uh, <laughs> Hilarious. I think we I, lost him with that one. We lost right. poor Billy. Billy, I'm texting you. Too late, girl. He's gone. He's gone. All He's right. out. <laughs> all right, guys. It was so great to have Thank you all. You Thank, I'm gonna, oh, Andrea waited the whole time. Andrea, look how cute she is. Hey, I love you all. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Man, listen. Watching Andrea do her thing. I got to tell you, it's a master class, like seriously. Yeah. Like she is, the comic genius is ridiculous. Uh -huh. Like it really, really is ridiculous. It was an honor. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, blow smoke up your ass, but like it really was an honor to watch you do your thing, man. Every time we shared, like, I was like, I get to watch this woman do her thing. It was fantastic. Yeah. Oh gosh, thank you so much. My gosh, thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say thank you and take it in as opposed to you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it means so much to me, especially in the world that we're in right now. That um, there's so much generosity of spirit and kindness and 
I, I, I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you for being such a lovely person, all of you guys. It's very sweet. Yeah. So, guys, you can always I, you know tell your friends this is going to stay up at starsinthehouse.com so they can watch all the fun things Billy said tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and um, for the viewers, tomorrow – I never know what the schedule is. Tomorrow, 2 o'clock – uh, you're in town. Oh, reunion of Broadway's You're in town. Oh, cool. cast. And then tomorrow oh. night, the new one day at a time cast, including wow. Norman Lear. I Ooh. know. We got to we gotta get those donations, people. We need That's famous right. people. Mm -hmm. No one else has this programming, Seth. This is unique programming. We're trying. Mm -hmm. We're trying. Well, and then Wednesday, we've got Little Dog Lab with Julie White, the original off Broadway cast. Oh, man. Oh, man. So good. Lucky. Wow. All right, We're so roll, uh, I'm going to play the out the credits. All right, you're going to play it out? Okay. This is for Shakina. Oh, okay. There you go. Hold on now. Oh. oh. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye. See y'all later. Hi, guys. I don't know the damn song. <laughs> Here's Wizard and I. What happened to Dr. John LaPook? Dr. LaPook, we had 10 people. We could only fit 10 people on the platform. So we told Dr. LaPook, tomorrow night, come back. So be here with Norman Lear. What about Dr. Vinny Boombat? <laughs> he was not available. <laughs> All right, we're going off the air and broadcast. Bye, everybody. Thanks for donating. Thanks for watching. Hey, I'm still here. Bye. Bye, Dave. <laughs> Bye, Joey.